All right, welcome and welcome back, everyone. All right, so today I'm gonna be doing a little bit of. Well, it's still it's gonna be like relating to comics, but um, something a little bit different. It's gonna be like character concept work. So, I'm gonna talk about designing a character. This one's gonna be relevant to the comic I'm making. So it's kind of about comics, but if you are designing characters, you know, like, everybody's going to have a different process, but I'm going to share mine with you. So normally when I'm designing characters, I'll do it in my sketchbook um, and open, like, two pages open like this. So I've got two pages. Instead of doing that, I've just got one piece of paper here. So I'm just going to pretend like it's a full spread of my sketchbook, because that's going to be easier to draw on um, for camera here uh, uh, for the purpose of recording. I don't know what I was trying to say, but... Um, I want to design this character. It's this cyborg lady. She's like heavily, heavily, um, I guess mechanized would be would be a good term. And I I I kind of had drawn her design before a while back. You may remember um, I was drawing this girl that had this like you know mechanical eye patch thing, and like half of her face was gone. So I'm gonna kind of. Um, design slash redesign her. I didn't look at any of my old drawings. I just kind of like have a vague image in my head. So I'm kind of just going to go off of uh, that and just see where this takes us. Um, I also saw a request in the comments to talk about, you know, maybe make a video about like drawing bodies and stuff. And I think that'd be fun. I might do that. Uh, I'll talk about it a little bit here. Um, when I'm designing a character, I usually... Sometimes I just jump right into it, like if I have a strong idea for a character. And sometimes I like to kind of start slow. I'm going to start slower here today. I've kind of just got like a general shape um, that I'm interested in for this character. Real skinny on top. Um, wide hips. And she's going to be like heavily mechanized cyborg lady. So, um, we, you know, we'll see, we'll see, we'll see where it goes. Uh, when you have a big open page like this, it's nice because you got a lot of room to um, explore the character you're working on. So, you know, you can start with like a full body or like some small little thumbnails and, you know, maybe do some like close up headshots. And you can have this whole page full um, for reference. I like doing it in a sketchbook because if you open the whole spread, you've got all of your character designs and sketches on that one page, and you don't have to be like flipping around. So if you want to open up to that page later um, for reference purposes to like have on the side while you're actually drawing the character, like in the comic or something, then um, then you have it all in one place. Uh, a lot of people I think like to like scan this stuff as well and like have it on their computer. Uh, yeah, that's one way to do it. A lot of times when I draw, I watch like YouTube videos and stuff. So like having something open on my computer isn't always uh, the most logical choice for me, so I like to have it on paper so I can, you know, have it on my desk and pull it out whenever I need it. Um, if I'm traveling, I'll take a picture of it on my phone or if I'm at, you know, work, working on something uh, so, that, so that I have it on hand as well. Um, you know, whatever, whatever works for you. It's good to keep reference material on hand, uh, whether it be your own personal reference material or stuff that you've, like, collected uh, that you want to use. Um, so she's going to have these, like, her her legs are totally totally robot legs, and she's been like completely augmented. So um, I started with like the basic silhouette here, and I'm thinking about like how she's going to be augmented here, and um, so kind of like you know I drew the figure, and basically I'm playing like dress up now, if that makes sense. Uh, one thing I remember about her is she, she had this like big stud thing um, right in the middle of her chest, and what that would be for would be basically like projecting like a shield of sorts because she's like totally geared um, for combat. She's going to be a pretty uh, mysterious character but um, should be a lot of fun. Uh, I'm going to reveal her pretty early on in the comic so you'll probably see me drawing her soon. Uh, that's why I wanted to um, get into her design and work on it because I got to draw her soon so I kind of have to design her. And um, since she's basically just, like, strictly built for combat, she's going to have all these, like, compartments and stuff. Uh, I'm going to try to keep the, like, mechanical parts fairly simple. Um, that's something to think about when you're drawing comics or designing a character for a comic. You're going to have to draw this character multiple times. 
and like over and over and probably multiple times on the same page so you gotta think about how much detail you want to draw because if it's a character you're gonna be drawing a lot you're gonna have to draw that detail every time you put them on the page unless uh, you, you know you mess around with some um, techniques to skip the detail and I'll, I'll talk about stuff like that too you know little little like tips and tricks um, that you can kind of like drop the detail uh, and still make it look convincingly detailed I don't know if that makes sense hopefully it does it'll make more sense when we talk about it anyway um, might as well add some cool shit I don't know if she's got like guns or swords or whatever but it's always fun to add uh, cool stuff it's gonna have some sort of like backpack thing but the cool thing about her is she's gonna like have like if you imagine like her current cyber or cyborg alterations as like a loadout, she's gonna have like different loadouts throughout the story. Um, she's her her bits are like interchangeable, so she'll be like have like different gear for different situations, which is gonna be really fun to draw. Um, I like to think about stuff like that before before I just toss someone in a comic. Think about stuff that's gonna be fun to draw. Think about stuff that's gonna be fun to do, um, so that that you, you don't get sick of drawing a character because I've, I've run into that many many times where I design a really cool character with like some really like detailed armor or something and then once I get to the practice of actually like drawing them in frame and stuff I'm like oh god I hate this is it's like too much detail or you know this or that and, ugh. but just going just going super rough like there's no there's no need to to fill in lots of specific details right now. Um, that hair is way too much. So, you know, I want to keep it more like this, like shorter. Um, and when I'm when I'm doing character concepts, I like to use ballpoint because if I get in a situation like this where I want to white something out, the ballpoint draws nicely back over the white out. Um, certain other pens and like a lot of pencils, especially. Um, it's difficult to draw like back on top of the whiteout once it dries. So, like here, I just white all that out, and then when it dries, I'll I'll draw back over it and continue. Um, this like this face I'm drawing here. When I had drawn her before, she had like a mechanized jaw, which I think I'm gonna stick with because it's a really cool idea. Um, she's she's mean. Uh, grouchy, right? You can see it. Um, and part of her, part of her neck is going to be mechanized too. You won't be able to see it because she wears like, kind of like this jumpsuit thing. I don't know how to describe it, but um, if you ever see her without a lot of her gear, which you may, she, like, she still has a lot of a lot of her body, but like limbs are all uh, mechanical. So. Uh, with my characters too, like I draw in a, a fairly cartoony style, so sometimes I'm going to draw noses on characters, sometimes I'm not, but I normally like to get a general idea for like head shape. Um, so I do, I'll do like profile views and stuff, because especially with like a cyborg character like this, it's like mechanized. You want to make sure it like looks good from from as many angles as possible. I'm not sure where I'm going with the hair. I think I'm just going to do like a short, like, side swept thing. I think I originally, when I drew her, I had her with this, like, almost like a, like a mohawk type thing. I think. I may not be remembering correctly. But I think I'm going to skip on that. And jo just go with something, like, short and side swept for her. Um, I think that might work better long term. And I'm going to figure out exactly where I'm going with this jaw. When I was drawing her before, I remember the hardest time I had, like, figuring out her design was figuring out how this, like, mechanical jaw that wraps all the way around her head was going to work. I don't want to make her look too much like Cull. Um, but I want her to look somewhat similar. Just so there's kind of, like, an identification there. Because they'll be interacting a lot. No spoilers. So as you can see, like it doesn't it doesn't look perfect, but you can draw back over that whiteout. Especially when you're just doing concepting, 
it's you might as well save the paper. You know what I mean? So, <clears throat> excuse me, I need some coffee. So, coffee break. Give me a second. Yeah, that's better. Anyway, hope you're all doing good. So, uh, enjoying the videos, which is great. I got a lot of really good feedback on that first one about making comics. So, you know, obviously, I was gonna do it anyway, but I'll keep I'll keep it up because uh, you seem to be liking it, and uh, that makes me happy. So, thank you. I uh, really appreciate it, and uh, all the all the support I've got. I've got a lot of uh, emails and stuff about the the dog I took in, and I just want to say that you guys are the best. You're just like good human beings in general, and I really do appreciate the help. He's a really good dog, and he totally deserves um, a second chance to be happy and healthy. And I won't talk too much about it, but if you if you didn't see the last video, basically I found a, a dog um, on the street that was like you know basically starving and uh, being neglected. He had a collar on. I don't know where he came from. There was no tag, just the collar. So. No real way of knowing where he came from, but based on the shape he was in, I don't know if he should be going back to uh, wherever he came from. But, uh, you know, we'll see. And you guys seem to be interested, caring people. So I'll update you as, you know, as it, as it goes on. He's a, he's a super good dog. Uh, I absolutely love him. And, you know, if you want to if you wanna help out an animal in need... Um, I could really use some extra cash. I got, thanks to you guys, like, just to tell you that you've already made an impact, like, I was able to get him a sweater, which he totally needed, and, uh, because it's, it's kind of cold here, and he's, he's really skinny. He's like a chihuahua mix. Um, he's mixed with some sort of larger dogs. He's, like, larger than a typical chihuahua, but, um, not by too much, but he's a, he's pretty skinny right now, just based on the you know, malnutrition and stuff, so, he's gaining weight, though, gaining weight slowly, um, I am not liking this face at all, this does not work for me, this is, this jaw, man, like, it's, it's hard, because this looks kind of, kind of dumb, um, at first I was thinking, like, the bottom of her face would be, like, scarred, and that's kind of what I was trying to go for here, but I don't think that works very well, and, uh, th that eye doesn't really work for her, I don't think, but, before I had this thing kind of blocky or like kind of like eye thing. It's not really like a camera. It's kind of more of like a. It would be more like a sensor, you know, like electromagnetic or infrared, maybe all of the above, to kind of beam information directly into her brain, uh, rather than to actually help her see. Because with this, with the you know being a cyborg and having all the electronic enhancements, um, there there's basically ways that she could beam the information directly into her head. Also, I think it's this head shape. I, I sketched out this head shape right here, and I think that works. It's more narrow um, on the cheeks. So, let's let's try it again. I'm kind of, if I, if I don't like the design, this is kind of more where I want to go. Like, these are good. This one's not so much, put X on that one. Um, but, I, you know, if you, if you mess up in a, in a, on a concept sheet or or whatever, leaving your mistakes there can be like, oh, well, this is what I don't want to do. Um, so you know for next time. Uh, so, yeah, make her face a little bit more narrow at the bottom, a little bit longer. I think that will lend to that mechanical jaw some more. You know, brush her hair back. Maybe that's what's bothering me, that the hair is not working. Might be a big part of it. I don't know. I think she should have one real ear, right? Maybe if I just keep it on the top of the head like a boy cut, almost as like it's you know it's not for it's not for looks. It's it's just for functionality. Um, just to like be out of the way for visit. Oh, you can hear hear Finn back there. Um, <laughs> stomping around. Good guy. He hang, he hangs out right next to me uh, while I'm drawing. He's just he's a really good dog. I kind of I've always well I don't know I mean not always but lately I've just really been into the idea of drawing like androgynous characters. I don't know if it's like I don't know exactly what has like led to that, but um. 
I like it. I don't know. I like, you know, kind of, you know, maybe not being 100% sure of a character's gender. Because that kind of... I don't know. It lends to the idea that, that, that I believe in that, you know, gender is not always super important with a character. Like, occasionally a character's gender might play a major role in the story, but it definitely doesn't have to. So, you know what I think I'm going to do? I think I'm going to do, instead of, like, having, like, a jagged, like, because I was going to draw her mechanical jaw, like, shark teeth, you know, like this, to make it look scary, but I think she's going to be scary enough being, like, this super lanky, like, robot woman, <laughs> so maybe if I just do it, like, blocked off, like, if I do the jawline almost, like, it's just... You know, like, not even for eating. Like, just, literally just to be there. It's like, maybe her jaw did get blown up or something. Um, I won't do any spoilers. I already know what her story is, but... That's kind of what I want people to be thinking about when they look at this character. Um, like, what is going on with her? Or, you know, kind of androgynous. I mean, it's gonna be obvious for her, but... Also the idea that, like, you know, women don't have to look feminine or be super sexualized, anything like that. I try to stay away from those ideas. I mean, I try to get a good variance of, like, where my characters are at as far as, um, you know, having a, having a good diversity, I guess, would be all that I have to say. That's really important to me. And I know I draw a lot of girls because that's just what I enjoy to draw, but um, it is important to me to me to have diversity, but also I think, you know, there's a bazillion comics out there. This is looking kind of like Tracer around here, uh, at least this design. Um, so I don't want to, I don't want to get too close to that. I kind of like this collar thing, but maybe I'll tone it down so it doesn't look like, look like Tracer all that much. Because here, here's the thing, if you're doing a character design, and your character is going to be inspired by a super popular character, and, you know, like, Tracer is a great example, or any Overwatch character, you got to be really careful, because you may think that, like, if you change a certain amount of things or make it, you know, different by X amount, that people won't notice. People will notice. People will notice. Because, like, I'll, I draw characters that aren't even inspired by other characters, and people are like, oh, it looks like this. And I was like, uh, like, I'll look up the character if it's not something I'm familiar with, and I'll be like, okay, like, I kind of get where you see it, but it's not really that obvious. Like, people are going to are gonna make those connections almost, like, subconsciously. Like, there's really not a whole lot you can do. So this right here, like, put a star by that, because that's good. That's what I like. So, as you can see, like, my whole process, like, coming down here from here, like, that's that's a pretty good concept there. That's a good place to hit on. That's the whole point of doing this, is to kind of progress, and like you, you try some things that don't work, try some things that do work, and bring it all together at some point. So, now that I've hit on that design that I like, I'll hit the profile, because she's got a whole lot of mechanical stuff on her head. She's got a half, half computer brain, um, which is something that I've always kind of wanted. Uh, computer brain would be sweet, wouldn't have to forget stuff anymore. And honestly, like the, the cons, uh, far outweighed by the pros of having a computer brain. Um, so whenever we get the computer brain technology, sign me the fuck up. Computer brain, hit me with it. Um, could really use that. So, yeah. Uh, let me know. If anybody's in the computer brain business, um, hit me up, please. Really appreciate it. Um, for the sake of simplicity, she does not need a nose. Uh, that's going to make things way too complicated. So we're going to stay away from the nose here. Um, and I can I can get away with that because, like I said, I do draw fairly, uh, like, comic-style characters, like very stylized, uh, you know, whatever you want to call it. I would, I would just say stylized rather than say, like, oh, anime style or anything like that because it's not necessarily, like, anything specific. It's literally just I like to draw stylized characters with odd proportions and uh, cool things going on. Um, and when I was drawing this before, too, like her like half computer brain, I had a lot more detail going on here, and I found that every time I draw the character, I'd ha it was so complicated that I would have to bring up the references every time, because there was so much like complex detail and stuff that it was like too much for me to just remember, but I want to keep it more simple in this iteration so that I don't have that problem. 
because uh, I had all these like moving parts down here around the jaw and stuff, and I think I'm just going to like super simplify it. Um, yeah, super simplify it. Technical term right there. Uh, yeah, and she had this like little buffer around the back of her neck, basically to hold the jaw or whatever. But there it goes, like simple. Uh, when you're drawing comics, simple. I like. I, I know I've said this already, but simple is is often better. Uh, it's going to be easier to draw in the long run. And don't forget that, like, when it comes to clothing and outfits and stuff, like, I was talking about this character, like, she's going to be wearing, you know, different stuff and have a different, like, equipment in different times. Like, just because you design, like, an outfit for your character is, like, they're, you, you think about the real world, you don't wear the same outfit every day. So it's totally acceptable to change up your character's outfits, even if it's just for the sake of simplicity. Like, if you've got a really complex scene going on where you've got to draw the same character a thousand times, and it's really not important what outfit they're wearing, put in, like, a t-shirt or some shit, um, if it's appropriate for your story. Like, you'll, you'll, you'll thank yourself for it. Um, not to say that you shouldn't draw super cool, detailed stuff, and a lot of people live for that kind of shit. Um... Just, just keep that in mind. That's just something to think about. That's not. I'm not. I'm not trying to say don't design like cool, detailed characters because if that's what you want to do, um, go ahead and do it. But just, just, just keep that in mind. That's something to think about. Because I ran into that problem before, and it made me sad. So, I, I try to stay away from like ultra detailed characters, like robot characters. God, this. It's hard, man. It's hard to do robot characters because they're so complex um, most of the time. I love this design right now. This is really working out for me. Uh, perfect. So th this is this is the whole point of doing these. Um, to go from something rough to go from something more refined. And then eventually I'll probably do like a final drawing of her, you know, maybe just in my sketchbook like for fun. Because um, I've got a pretty good idea of what's going on here. But we can go ahead and get into some more detail really fast because um, I realize that I've spent like 20 minutes just filling up half of this page so I think I'm just gonna go and you know maybe like detail out like a leg or something or maybe like her upper body yeah let's do that let's do the upper body really quick so and the more the more time you draw draw the character the easier it's gonna get for you in the long run um, so it's it's a good thing to draw the character multiple times, even if you don't really have to. Uh, it's good practice. So hopefully, you know, you don't. This isn't just for comics either. Like this is this is for anything. Whether you're just designing a character like for fun, just to you know to have and draw and. Um, like, that's it. Like, I, I know a lot of people are doing that nowadays, and I, I've made comments about the whole, like, OC thing before, like, having all these characters that, you know, you maybe you have a story in mind for, but it seems like what a lot of people do, <laughs> myself included, um, before I go on with this, is just draw the character um, and, like, not do anything with them in a story. Now, I used to kind of have this, like, I used to kind of look down on that, like, whoa, like, you're making all these characters, you're not doing anything with them, like, you should do, do something with them. But... I, I've realized that uh, you, it's, it's hard to find the time to, to make comics and to make complex stories. So, you know, it's actually, thinking about it from like a different lens, it's a really good practice uh, to create characters and kind of be developing them in your head. So if you ever want to use them in a story, like, you've got, you've got characters you can use. Like, this, this character I originally had the idea for, I don't even remember if I was going to use her for anything, but I had the idea for her a long time ago, and now I've, I've found a world that she can fit into, so I'm drawing her into that world. So there's just, there's a, you know, there's an example right there of developing characters in your off time, and, uh, that wouldn't necessarily be for a specific thing, and then bringing them back to use them for a specific thing later. Uh, I don't. I don't want this to be like a, a cloth type collar, so I'm gonna kind of change it because it looked like I was. I was drawing kind of like buckles on there before, and I was like, why does she need buckles if she's a robot lady? Like everything should be like magnetic, right? Like just a clip on. I don't know. I mean, if I was designing robots, like that's what I would do. Um, just make everything magnetic. Or you know, electromagnetic, whatever. Uh, 
but yeah, so this is this is gonna be like this is just like placeholder because that's a pretty generic design. I gotta do something diff different with it. I don't want it to look like an Iron Man thing too much. That's what I'm talking about. Like, don't don't make stuff too similar. But um, basically, this is all just gonna be like you know, like metal or like a blade of type armor. I don't know if that's how you pronounce that word, a blade of. It's an armor that kind of like breaks away as it gets impacted to absorb the absorb the blow. Um, and in this story, like, it's it's set pretty, not necessarily in the future, but in a technologically advanced time. Obviously, you got cyborg ladies running around. I mean, not all over the place, but there's at least one cyborg lady, and I'm drawing her right now. Also, another, like, a very important thing for me with this character is to not, like, she's, she's going to be, I mean, she's sexy. She's a robot lady, right? Like, that's, you know, automatically, like, well, for me anyway. Like, robot chicks are, are awesome. But, like, you know, I don't want her to have, like, giant boobs or anything. She doesn't, she doesn't need them. Um, she's literally, like, a cyborg designed for, for combat scenarios, um, field work, that kind of thing. So, like, having giant knockers would... Is is not a not a good choice like tactically. So given the option, um, she she doesn't need them. Uh, so she doesn't have them. So instead, she's got this like shield thing here. Instead of having boobles. Uh, but yeah, and I also wanted to like her proportions are going to be pushed because she's she's a robot. Like she can logistically be way skinnier, um, and still have the same like you know, I guess, uh, power, I don't know, or even, even more, because she's, she's a robot, like, she doesn't have to be buff, because she's a robot, she can be skinny, super skinny, even, I might even push it more than that, just to make the whole, like, robot thing really obvious, not robot, cyborg, sorry, 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 um, but, I'm gonna keep these joints fairly simple, and, you know, interchangeable legs, gonna be fun, Interchangeable arms and equipment kits. Gonna be super fun to draw. Really fun character. Don't know what I'm gonna call her yet. I got no ideas, so she doesn't need a name yet. Um, so I'm not gonna come up with it just yet. If I think of something, I'll probably, I'll probably just go with it. But no ideas right now. So that's pretty good, I think, for well, almost 30 minutes now. I like how I, I said at the beginning, like when I was starting this, like, oh, I'm going to try to make videos 15 minutes. I've literally done that like twice. All my other videos have just been longer. So screw it. I'm just going to make the videos as long as they need to be. Uh, <laughs> like I think 15 minutes is a good length, uh, but not in every scenario. Like especially here, like it's hard to spend only 15 minutes um, designing a character. Um, and I know I've, I've got other videos and stuff to do. Uh, i got to finish that demon girl drawing finally and other stuff like that, but hey, at least we're here, like I made some progress, so I can work off of this, I'll probably end up doing like a more detailed drawing here eventually, maybe I'll record it, maybe I won't, I don't know, but I've got a sheet full of drawings of this character, and hopefully it gave you some ideas for designing your own characters too. Um, another thing I do usually when I'm designing a character, if I don't have an idea of exactly what their body shape is going to be, like I had a good idea for her already, uh, I think I already make the torso too long. I don't want to keep it shorter like this. But that's that's okay. That works for me. Um, but a lot of times what I'll do is do like, not not really a stick figure, but like almost a stick figure. Just kind of like do really simple like blocky shapes. Really small to figure out kind of like the body type and proportions I want. So what I would have done with her if I didn't already have the ideas is something like this. Um, small upper body, wide hips, long legs long arms, and that can help you figure out without spending a whole lot of time, you know, exactly like how you want a character, uh, a character's body to look. So if that, that's one thing that's related to like drawing the human body, um, it's something I do at this point, I do pretty much like automatically in my head, because um, I've done it for so long that that's like, that's, I'm just used to it, but if you're not used to drawing the body all the time, like doing doing little like proportion thumbnails like this 
can be super helpful. And a lot of times, you know, just drawing like a circle for the rib cage and like a circle for the hips, like that can help you um, just get started super easy. Or if you like doing a box, I like with with female characters, the hips. I like you know, I like when they flare out. I like white hips. So doing like kind of like, you know, this shape. That can be a good uh, starter for hips, and then the legs come out of the side of the hips. Here you go, knees. I'll do another video where I talk about like specifically like drafting a body to draw, and I'll go into more details of like using uh, basic shapes for like the rib cage and the hips and stuff like that. Um, because like I learned to do that in figure drawing classes like years ago, and I've been doing it, um, you know, so much that it all comes naturally to me now. Like I do it all in my head, but I definitely like to share that with you guys because, you know, not everybody has access to figure drawing classes and stuff like that. And this is kind of the purpose, I guess, of my YouTube channel is not only to, you know, share cool drawings and do stuff like that, but, but you know, to share my knowledge and share the education I've had, which could help you decide whether or not you want to pursue an art education for yourself. I think that's an important dialogue. I don't think everyone should assume that Art school is a must, but that's that's a discussion for another video. We're already running pretty long here, so I'll catch you guys in the next one. It's either going to be, I don't know, it's probably going to be more comics, but we'll we'll see where it goes. I might draw her, I might do something. I don't know. There's going to be a video eventually. I, I'm not going to decide now. I'm so, I, can, I can't I can't because if I decide on something, I'll probably want to change my mind. But anyway, thanks for watching this video. I really appreciate it. And I really appreciate everything. You guys are the best. I've said it time and time again. I have the best fans. And there's really no argument to be had there. So love you guys. You're the best. And I'll see you the next time around. Bye-bye.